Last week, I shot the Horsehead and Flame Nebula using the giant FLT-132 on Saturday night. Since then, I've had the flu and I've never been so sick in my entire life. I've been out of commission all week. I couldn't even get out of bed. Now, however, I'm feeling a lot better and I want to talk about the image I took last week. Okay, I had to add some existing H-Alpha data to the image before sharing. I've said this before, but once you get used to a certain amount of punch in your object, it's hard to overlook. You'll never be satisfied with it until you bring it back to that level. Have you ever looked at someone's image and thought to yourself, how did they do that? How did they get the target to pop like that? Like, are their imaging processing skills just that much better than mine? Well, they may be, but chances are they've added narrow band data. I can't stress this enough, the impact that makes. Maybe this isn't such a huge secret, but for my fans shooting with a DSLR camera and RGB in the city, adding just narrow band HA to the red channel alone can make a world of difference in your image. Now you're going to want to use a modified camera to get the best results meaning that the stock IR cut filter has been removed or replaced. The stock IR cut filter in your DSLR actually blocks out certain wavelengths of light that are not useful for daytime photography, but essential for astrophotography. If you're looking to get your camera modified, check out Hap Griffin's DSLR modification services. You can send your stock Canon DSLR camera to get the IR cut filter removed and then decide if you want to add an astrophotography friendly version of a UV IR cut filter in there, uh, like a Beta or Astrodon, or you can just simply leave the sensor open as I did in my camera. If that's the case, you'll want to make sure you're using a UV IR cut filter somewhere along the imaging train between your camera sensor and the telescope. Let's talk about the William Optics FLT-132. All I can say is wow. I've really had a chance to inspect the data produced by this massive refractor to really appreciate the astrophotography performance of this telescope. I took a close look at the difference of the important areas of my astrophotos. This means sharpness, color correction, star size, and color. I put my previous images of the horse head taken with the ED-102 head to head against the new images taken with the 132. Aside from the obvious increase in focal length, the stars were smaller and tighter. At f7, the flow star captured extremely crisp and defined details in the tendrils of the flame nebula. I've never seen the flame quite so contrasty and detailed in any of my photos before. The stars were actually sharper in my RGB version of the horse head using the 132 than my previous attempts using H-alpha in other telescopes. All that extra aperture means soaking up so much extra starlight and extra deep sky goodness. Telescopes like the Fluoro Star are not just showpieces to show off at star parties. It really makes a difference when it comes to backyard astrophotography. On my first run with the 132, I neglected to accommodate the extra length of the OTA. I know it seems obvious, but don't underestimate the narrow-mindedness of an excited astrophotographer. I was horrified that the tube of the scope would run into the legs of the tri-pier when slewing around. This time around, I moved the center pier up about 8 inches, which provided plenty of clearance for the 132 to slew around without fear of crashing into any of the legs. I hope this winter has been kind to you and you've made some progress with your astrophotography. Remember to be patient. If this was an easy hobby, everybody would be doing it. Most of my images don't see the light of day until I process them for at least four to five hours, and sometimes much longer. 
Take some time to appreciate and enjoy the gear you currently have before jumping the gun on something new. Remember to enjoy the entire process every step of the way. I can't believe I have to say this, but we're taking pictures of space. That is so f cool and don't ever forget it.